Hey guys, welcome back to another Python video. And in, in this video, I'm going to show you guys some basic file handling. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So we've done quite a bit in our series so far. We've looked at tuples, functions, all kinds of different things, but we haven't actually looked at file handling yet because, you know, at some point you're going to want to have the output of a program saved into a file, or maybe you want a, to read a file. So these are definitely some important concepts that you'll need to know. So let's look at a basic example right now. I'm going to create a variable called my file, and I'm going to set that equal to file.txt. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do file equals open my file and then R in double quotes right there. So basically I'm opening a file, but I'll describe that in more detail here in a moment. Now what I'm going to do is for line in file print line. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to set a variable to file.txt, which is simply a string. But what file is going to do is use the open function to open my file or whatever file name is stored in the my file variable, which should exist, otherwise we'll get an exception. And it's going to open it in read-only mode. And then once it's opened the file, it's going to go ahead and print every line in the file. This is just a simple for loop. We've done for loops in a previous video. For every line in the file, we're going to print that line. I'm going to go ahead and save this file and minimize this. So now what I'm going to do is actually create the file that our Python program is going to print from. So I'll just do nano file.txt. And here I've already created it. I basically have a list of Linux distributions. I thought that would be pretty fun. So I have several here, Arch Linux, Debian, and so on and each distribution is on a different line in this file. You can go ahead and put whatever text you want on individual lines. I'll go ahead and exit. So let's go ahead and run the script and see what happens. And you can see that it actually printed each individual line. So let's go ahead and take a look at the program to see what exactly happened. So here I have file.txt, which is just the name I gave it. I stored it in that variable, my file. And again, like I mentioned already, I'm opening my file as read-only, which is what the R stands for here. And then for every line in that file, I'm simply printing that line. Now, what I should do, though, is add some error handling. We looked at handling exceptions in a previous video, and what we should do is try to keep in the practice of doing that as much as we can. Now here, I'm trying to open the file, my file. But what if that particular file didn't actually exist? Well, we would get an error. So for example, if I was to uh, move file.txt to file2.txt, and then run the, the script again, I get an actual error. And the error I get is file not found error. Now, we can actually try to capture that particular type of exception. So what I'm going to do is simply copy this because I'm too lazy to type all that. And I'll bring our script back. And now what I'm going to do is add a line right here. And I'm going to change this to try. Need now to indent this. And for the exception, so I'm going to capture the file not found error as E. And then if that exception were to occur, I'm going to print the file was not found. So essentially the logic here as a programmer is that I know that I need to open this file. And I also know that it's also possible the user could have removed it. I don't really have any way of knowing what state the user's hard drive is going to be in and whether or not that file is truly going to be there. So by that logic, I'm going to try to predict that a possible failure could happen, which is my indication that I probably should use a try statement here. And if this occurs, I'm going to print 
the file was not found. And also, since I have that captured as E, I'm going to also print the error right there. So what this allows me to do is have a custom error message. Again, I could say the file was not found or if it's another program that does something important, I could say, you know, you run into a problem, please file a bug and here's the bug report URL, whatever I want. And then for debugging purposes, I actually do also want to see the error. So I captured it as E and I'm printing it. So I'll go ahead and save the script. Let's go ahead and run it. The file was not found. So it did print our print statement there. I did remove that file, so that's why it's not found. And then the exception was captured as E, and it's actually going to show me the actual exception. What I should also do, in addition, is adjust the exit code as well. Again, just in case I have other scripts that want to utilize this script, I do want to have an exit code, especially if the user wants to check the exit code or if it's important in some way. And in some cases it is, so it's a good idea to get in a habit of that. Again, a non-zero exit code is considered a failure. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the file back to its original name. Clear the screen. And we can see file.txt is there. I'm gonna go ahead and run it now. And we can see that it actually went ahead and was able to print everything from the file because I made sure that it actually does exist. Now, returning to the script, I don't wanna to spend too much time on try and accept. We went over that in a previous video. I just thought that this would be a very good example to show you guys because this is a situation that could produce an error, a situation where we are expecting to find a file but we don't actually know if it's truly going to be there. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, guys. But before we do, I just wanted to quickly mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode is an awesome provider of cloud Linux servers, and their Cloud Manager dashboard makes it extremely easy to set up your own Linux server in seconds. Whether you like Fedora, Debian, or Ubuntu, or whatever your distribution of choice is, you can have your very own Linux server running your favorite distribution in a geographic location near you with the latest one just recently introduced in Toronto. So go ahead and check out the link in the description below this video where you can get $20 in credit towards your own Linux server. So go ahead and check that out and let's get right back to the video. All right, so here I have another example. And what I wanna show you guys is append mode for A. Now we did R for read only before, but we didn't actually have to do that before we had R for read only. But if we don't include that, Python assumes read only. I like to be explicit though and make it clear what I'm doing. Read only is actually preferred. If you don't have a reason to write to a file, you shouldn't write to it. But often you will need to write to a file. So append mode is a way to do that. W for write mode is another way to do that. So what's the difference between A and W? Well, actually A for append means it moves the cursor to the end of the file and appends what you're trying to write to the file to the end. Whereas with W for write, the cursor, so to speak, is at the beginning of the file and that's where it's going to write it to. So I'm opening the file in append mode. And basically I created a list right here of some titles of some movies. And then what I'm gonna do is in this for loop here, for M in movies, it's going to file.write M, and then when everything is all said and done, file.close. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this file. And I'm going to remove file.txt and then touch file.txt. And we can see file.txt is a zero byte file. There's nothing in it. I'm gonna go ahead and run our script. I called mine appendfile.py. And there was no output. But if we check ls, we see that now the file is no longer zero. Well, what's inside the file? Let's check it out. And what it did was it actually wrote everything altogether, but you can see that the program did run. It did what we expected it to do, or at least it did what we asked it to do. 
Maybe not what we thought it would do, but it did, in fact, add those titles, those movie titles to that text file. Let's go ahead and return to our script here and take another look at this. All right, so one of the things I wanted to address was the fact that everything is being written together. And to address that, what I did was I added a little string concatenation right here where we're printing the current movie, like every time the for loop iterates, m is equal to one of these items in the list. But what I'm actually gonna do is concatenate a line break. Let's go ahead and see how the output is handled now. So what I'm gonna do now is empty out that file. One way to do that is to use truncate-s0 file.txt, and that's a bash command right there. And now we can see that our file.txt is zeroed out. And I'm gonna go ahead and run our script again. I'll just run it a few times. And let's just see what happened. And we can see that it actually did what we were hoping it would do in the first place, which is add in every line one of the movies from that list. And since we're looping over the entire list, it's going to add each of them to that output. So just as a quick review, guys, I'm creating a variable called my file, and I just put the file name in here. It's just a standard string meant to represent a file name. I'm going to use a try statement right here to basically try to open that file in append mode. And if it's not able to, for example, the file wasn't found, then I'm handling that exception right here, which is not required, but it's a good practice to get into. Then I am creating a list right here, and I just put some movie titles in there as an example. And then I'm doing a for loop, and I'm writing each item in that for loop to that file, and then I'm adding a new line at the end. And then to be clean, I'm gonna go ahead and close that file. And as a reminder, I have append mode right here. I could have done W if I wanted write mode, which would put the cursor at the beginning of the file. But in our case, that wouldn't make much of a difference. So that was an example of how to do some basic file handling in Python. And I know that wasn't extremely useful, but as you get further into Python, when you start to do things like logging, for example, it's actually a very important skill set to have because you're gonna be managing files quite often, especially if you're writing some kind of a service. So anyway, I hope that was helpful for you guys. And as always, subscribe to my channel because I'm gonna have more Python videos for you coming right up. I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you wanna help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the description below. And there you'll find a link to purchase my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition. You'll also find a link to my Patreon page, as well as my Amazon store, which includes a listing of Linux compatible hardware that I've tested personally. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.